<laughs> All right. Well, let's make this official. Hello, YouTube. Um, we're live here for the Tom Lewis Workshop. This is Maritime Folknet, and well, I'm not here to tell you all that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have our MCs do that. So, uh, Dan Roberts, would you take it away? All right. Well, thank you very much, David, and thank you everybody for coming to see what we have to show. Um, this is our annual um, workshop. We do one one a year. Um, on the subjects of maritime music and maritime culture um, and this year we're really fortunate to have a paragon of such things maritime folknet is a very nonprofit organization dedicated to the enjoyment and perpetuation and participation in maritime music uh, we've been an organization for about eight or ten years um, and uh, we uh, do solicit your support in various ways. You can join us and be a member, at which point we will send you a free CD from our amazing stash of CDs. Um, you can donate to us. Uh, we willingly accept money uh, in whatever denomination or currency you have. Um, you can go to maritimefolknet.org um, and encounter what we do. We also have some of our concerts uh, already uh, up on YouTube and on our, our, our Facebook uh, page. So please do check all of those out. Um, and of course, you can also check out Mr. Tom Lewis um, when at a later point. So we are really fortunate to have with us uh, Tom Lewis, Royal Navy veteran, raconteur, shanty man, and all around good guy and we are so thrilled to have you tom um we will be doing this for uh, about an hour and then we will take a short uh, half time uh at which point we will i will hand off the uh, ceremonial duties to our friend and fellow board member helen gilbert so in case I haven't uh, I have actually said everything I need to say I would love to turn things over to Tom mr. Tom Lewis nice to see you nice to see you Dan and nice thank you all for being here thank you all for being here <laughs> Now that really was a sea shanty. It's probably one of the most universally recognizable sea shanties and even children's songs. But uh, we'll get back to it later and I will explain more about it and we'll, uh, we'll even finish the evening or close to finishing the evening with it. But for now, at that point, I didn't have my glasses on, which shows I was the performer, Tom Lewis, because I never wear my glasses on stage. For those of you interested, I am actually wearing the red top boots and the black pants. But now I am Tom Lewis, the pedant. And uh, I've been invited by the good folks at Maritime Folknet to expound for two hours impossible i can't do this in under three days um, but uh, the subject tonight is the evolution of the sea shanty and i will be uh, looking forward to questions and possibly even discussions as we go through the evening but to start with that was a sea shanty it really was used for sailors two, three hundred years ago to, well, maybe not 300, but certainly 200 years ago to help them with the work on a sailing ship. Now, for what 
whatever reason, there seems to be a universal international appeal about the sea and ships and sailors of bygone years and through right into current times. I don't know if that's got something abatistic to do with people didn't used to get far away from their home village and anybody who came from far away or went too far away was seen as somehow pretty exotic and their music then became exotic. But the songs we choose to call sea shanties became an integral part of a cultural interchange imbued with the romance and adventure as a lifestyle perceived as being removed from the mundane. Now, shanties as we've come to know them had a really short lifespan. They didn't really start getting up steam until the end of the Napoleonic era, the first couple of decades in the 19th century. Before that time, ships needed very large crews because they might be called to have lots of manpower to fight off pirates, marauders, even men of war of enemy nations. So ships went to sea with a lot of sailors, so there was, it was easy to spread the work amongst that number. However, once Napoleon was gone, you still had the pirates and the privateers who had been legal pirates for decades and then suddenly were supernumerary, no longer wanted on voyage, literally. And, but they, uh, they didn't know anything else to do, so they kept pirating. And then just uh, around about 1820, there was a big international conference in Paris and they declared war on piracy sort of like war on drugs and war on terrorism and it but i have to say that one worked they did really clear the sea of pirates to such an extent that intercontinental international interoceanic trade started to burgeon and there was money to be made and capitalism was well established so ship owners and shipping lines started to downsize the crews because they didn't need these guys to fight anymore they just needed them to work the ships so you got a situation where the technology wasn't advancing very quickly but there were less people to do the work so the sailors themselves started to invent songs, rhythmical songs to help with every sort of shipboard work, whether it was hauling on a line, heaving on a capstan bar, scraping the deck with a piece of holy stone, working at a winch, whatever they had to do, they invented a song for it to help them do that. They they would employ, actually pay, a fella to lead the songs and to help the work along. So here's a song that was a, a halyard shanty. Now a halyard was just a line to work a sail, either to haul a, sp haul a, a yard higher up a mast, to lower a yard, to pull down sails, to move the yards around was a halyard shanty. So the shanty man would sing a line, and I know I'm I know I'm preaching to the choir here, and I'm not trying to tell anybody to suck eggs, teach anybody to suck eggs, but this is a halyard shanty to keep the crew interested and to stop them just 
lollygagging around, there had to be a story in the song. So the story in this is of a sailor who's got one night ashore before he goes back to his ship and he's looking for looking for amusement and recreation, a few drinks, maybe a bit of adventure. But he is from a shipping line called the Black Bull Shipping Line. And towards the end of this, we're going to get back to the Black Bull Shipping Line because there are some people around there who, uh, who are within hailing distance of what is left of the Black Bull Shipping Line. However, this is a Black Bull sailor. You could tell that because when he went ashore, he turned down the tops of his sea boots and he exposed the red felt liners, which was the Black Bull sailor's trademark. And the local constabulary on seeing this knew they had trouble on their hands and the best defense being a good offense would reach for their billy club and uh, the black ball sailor was in trouble again All right. i don't think i've ever sung this with my glasses on before <laughs> I'm a deep water sailor who'll do you no wrong. Way, hey, blow the man down. Buy me a drink and I'll sing you a song. Give me some time to blow the man down. As I was a rolling down Paradise Street. Way, hey, blow the man down. A Liverpool copper, a chance for a mate. Oh, give me some time to blow the man down. He said, I see you're a black baller by the cut of your hair. Way, hey, blow the man down. On the long red top sea boots, I see that you wear. Give me some time to blow the man down. He sails on some packet that flies the black ball. Way, hey, blow the man down. Rob some poor Dutchman of clothes, boots and all Give me some time to blow the man down I said, Mr. Policeman, you do me great wrong Way, hey, blow the man down I'm a flying fish sailor just home from Hong Kong Give me some time to blow the man down Well, I knocked off his hat, I swung at his jaw In the wall, give me some time to blow the man down. They gave me six months up in Liverpool jail. Way, hey, blow the man down. For fighting policemen, they won't give me a bail. Give me some time to blow the man down. So come all of you sailors that follows the sea. Way, hey. You'll find it all pay. Give me some time to blow the man down. So, hey, Tom. Yeah. Dan here. Uh, we had a question from Richard. Um, he would like um, for the non sailors. Um, non deep water sailors to to, uh, to show hauling heaving um, so give, give the actions good enough yeah well you see that song was only done with the button accordion with the melodeon for reasons of performance there was very rarely mu uh, accompanying music with a sea shanty it would be done unaccompanied a cappella uh, the only music that might be done was if uh, the shanty man could play a fiddle he would uh, often at a capstan when they were pushing around on the on the capstan bar to haul up the anchor or use it as a winch to to raise him a, a main yard or get load cargo on board he might the, the shanty man might sit in the middle of the capstan 
going around and around and around, being pushed around by his mates while he played his fiddle. But, uh, but really, with blow the man down, and blow the man down means to give him a, give him a punch and get him down on the deck. That was what the first mates would do with somebody who had a bad attitude. So with that one, we're, I'm going to try and get the get this down here. So the, the shanty man would be getting his crew ready and five, six, maybe eight men on a line would be preparing to haul. And he would sing, I'm a deep water sailor, who'll do you no wrong. And then you go to me, way, hey, blow the man down. Let's see if I can get that down a little bit further. <laughs> Buy me a drink and I'll sing you a song. Give me some time to blow the man down. And they'd all be pulling at the same time. And that was the point of the exercise. The point of the song was to coordinate that muscular effort. When they were going around the capstan, would use a different rhythm, something with a march rhythm, so they would be stamp, 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 stamping around. And all the time, there'd be a little clinking sound happening. Tinka, 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 because there were little iron poles that were running over ratchets, which was to stop the anchor taking charge and reversing the capstan which would uh, lead to a lot of broken bones and missing teeth. But uh, those, those would, the ratchets would catch in the poles. And there were eight, what was it? No, there were 10 poles and nine ratchets on each capstan. Bigger ones would have more or less, smaller ones would have less or more. But so there was no discernible rhythm it, unless of course it was it was nine and eight in which case you get a slip jig <laughs> but uh, every every job had a different rhythm a different song to accompany it lots lots of different songs seven eight dozens of songs for each job and a shanty man a good shanty man could know what was happening to such a degree that he could tailor his song to last the exact length of the job until the first mate or the second mate would be watching and he'd be seeing where, where the where the yard was looking over the side seeing where the anchor was and he'd go high enough well enough and uh, everything would stop but the shanty man would have reached the end of his song because he was an experienced shanty man. I hope that answers the question, sort of. <laughs> so shanties as we've come to recognize them have become community songs, chorus songs, um, which, which is what we love about them because that gives us all the opportunity to, to be part of the crew, to be part of the choir, to be part of the community and sing along with your friends. And if you've only just met them, singing with them, make sure they quickly become friends. Now, I have just did um, absolutely for no reason. I am here. You're, you're looking down the length of our boat. We are uh, Lynn and I are on our narrowboat in Tara Marina at Knockvicker, not far from Carrick on Shannon in Ireland. We're uh, we're becoming refugees from Brexit and Boris Johnson. And uh, this is IPA. Now, if you order IPA in England, it will say on there India Pale Ale. Well, these, this is a local brew. It's absolutely delicious, if a little cloudy, but that's exactly the way it's meant to be. And it's actually Irish pale ale. Slange. So shanties have become 
a performance. And not just a solo performance, but a whole group effort. And there's, before moving ashore, they, they got sort of polished up. I'm going to sing you a song that sounds like it was a traditional song. And uh, let's see what we've got here. Might try, uh, I'll just move back a little bit there. Okay. Ships may come and ships may go as long as the sea shall roll. If sailor lad likewise is dad, he loves a flowing bowl. Alas, ashore he does adore one that is plump and round. When his money's all gone, it's the same old song. Get up, Jack John, sit down. Come along, come along with jolly bright boys. There's lots more grog in the jar. We'll plough the briny ocean where the jolly roving tar. When Jack's ashore, tis then he'll go to some old boarding house. He's welcomed in with rum and gin, likewise with pork and souse. He'll spend and he'll spend and he'll never offend until he lies drunk on the ground. When his money's all gone, it's the same old song. Get up, Jack John, sit down. Come along, come along, me jolly bright boys. There's lots more grog in the jar. We'll plough the briny ocean with a jolly roving tar. Tis then he'll sign aboard some ship bound for India or Japan. For in Asia there the ladies fair all love a sailor man. He'll go ashore and he won't scorn to buy some maid a gown. But when his money's all gone, it's the same old song. Get up, Jack, John, sit down. Come along, come along, the jolly bright boys. There's lots more grog in the jar. We'll plough the briny ocean with a jolly roving tar. When Jack gets old and weather beat, too old to roll about, tis then he'll go to some grog shop till eight bells calls him out. Then he'll raise his eyes up to the sky, saying, boys, we're homeward bound. But when your money's all gone, it's the same old song. Get up, Jack John, sit down. Come along, come along, my jolly brave boys. There's lots more grog in the jar. We'll plough the briny ocean with a jolly roving tar. Come along, come along, my jolly brave boys. There's lots more grog in the jar. We'll plough the briny ocean with a jolly roving tar. Now then. Before we take any questions or discussions, I have to tell you that song, I, I don't know if anybody, actually a lot of you will know Jeff Davis and Jeff Warner. Well, Jeff Warner, of course, was the son of Frank and Ann Warner, who are historically world renowned for collecting traditional songs. And in 1943, they collected that song from a woman who lived near New Bedford. And they put it down as they couldn't find out anything about it. Because they didn't have the internet and Dr. Google. But in actual fact, uh, I've got some information about that somewhere here. Uh, whoa. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Yes, somebody then turned up one day with a theater program from a Broadway show called Old Lavender in 1885. And lo and behold, in the program, that song was advertised, The Jolly Roving Tar by Ed Harrigan and David Braham both expatriate limeys 
probably ex-sailors or certainly would have come over on a sailing ship from the old country and they got so much technical detail into that song which is perfectly correct that Frank and Ann Warner were fooled into thinking that it was a traditional song. Dan, do we have any do we have any questions at this point or is anybody want is anybody wanting to argue with me? <laughs> Can't hear you. You're muted. Dan Roberts is muted. There we go. There was a request for a stamp and go. A stamp and go. Okay. At one point or another. Okay. Stamp and go. Uh, there, there are very few of those came, came down to us. There, there are some in, there are actually, I think about two or three uh, mentioned in Stan Hugel's book, Shanties from the Seven Seas. And uh, I think I might as well move on to that at, at the moment. But a stamp and go. Um, I can demonstrate that um, and you will find there's a wonderful Peter Ustinov movie called Billy Budd. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a wonderful, it's a wonderful movie. I'm trying to think of who played the part of Billy Budd. He was uh, Terrence Stamp. Stamp played Billy Budd and uh, he gets hanged with a stamp and go by his shipmates. And in actual fact, they uh, they form a line with with the with a line over their shoulder, what has become a hangman's rope, and just before, just before that they they're, they're they're not sure they really want to do this. They're being ordered to by their officers, and Billy Budd, Terrence Stamp shouts out. God bless Captain Veer. And they know they've got permission and then they hoist him up. But I really do not know an actual song that would be done as a stamp and go. Pardon? No, round the corner Sally was a, sh was, was a, um, it would be, yeah, okay. Can I go into that and right now? Yeah, fine. Give, give me, give me an recording. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, where did it go here? I just lost my question. Um, oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, well, let's let's have Brian Fowler from Loughborough, UK. Would you go ahead and unmute and ask your question to Tom? Oh yeah. Hi Hello, there, Brian. Hello, Tom. Good to see you again. Sorry, not that long ago when you joined us. Our little no, it's not. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, the question, the question is for you. Um, who do you consider was your greatest influence musically? And, um, you know, what in particular did, did you like about them? Wow. I have had, you, you've got to realize I'm, I'm closing in on my 80th birthday here. So I've had a lot of musical influences. But I, you know, I suppose, um, apart from Frank Sinatra was, was my singing influence. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's quarter to three. There's no one in the place except you and me. So set them up, Joe. I've got a little story I'd like you to know. We're drinking, my friend, to the end of a sweet episode. Make it one for my baby and one more for the road. Which is hardly a sea shanty now, is it? Um, <laughs> but, but an influence for me, and which, which wasn't a sea shanty either, but I think it was, it was closer was Lonnie Donegan. Lo Lonnie Donegan, of course, was uh, Chris Barber's banjo player. But before he joined uh, the Chris Barber band, he had been he'd been cruising around the U.S. rubbing shoulders with all, with all sorts of people. And he came back and he 
sort of gave an authenticity, even if it was an American authenticity, to uh, to the what we now realize were folk songs that he was singing. And one of the one of the most we'll be even be getting into the blues later at some stage on this over here, over here, I have a I've have a sort of program written out and like every set list i've ever had we've gone off it already uh, <laughs> but uh, but lonnie donegan had all sorts of up-tempo skiffle things and i used to buy little 45s and on the back of one of them i think it may have been um may have been rock island line there was a song that just hit me in the stomach and it was Ain't no more cane on the brazos. Oh, they've ground it all up into molasses. Oh, Captain, don't you do me? Like you done, poor John. Oh, 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 oh. And years later, I heard Huddy Ledbetter singing a track lining song, which in its own way is a shanty, because it's to it's to get people to to heave on a crowbar, get a get a, a, a track lining crew to heave on their crowbars all at the same time. And I realized that I was listening to exactly the same thing as, as that. So that that in some way was a shanty. And the shanties really just were work songs. There were there, there were field hoeing shanties. There were track lining shanties. There, every rhythmical job had a had a shanty. But those those are my influences, and everybody I've ever heard influenced me some way or another. Um, I there are still songs that I learned from Jim McGeehan where I have a Geordie accent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I often hear I often hear Johnny Collins in your voice in your singing. Well, you know, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be here tonight doing this if it hadn't been for Johnny Collins. Jo Johnny. And I met out in Singapore in 1967 uh, when he was a sergeant in the Royal Army Medical Corps. He was a lab tech and uh, and I was on my submarine out there and Johnny started running a folk club and he was just the greatest thing ever to hit the, the Singapore folk clubs. It was just the bar went up several notches as soon as he stepped on stage. I remember I remember the night that he arrived. He uh, he actually arrived in Singapore with it, with his wife and family. Got the official transport back to the married quarter. Got them installed. Sent for a taxi and came to the folk club. <laughs> this isn't about shanty, so anyway, have, have we got anything else there, Dan? You're muted, Dan. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, my <laughs> mouse, my mouse decided to, to freeze for a moment. Oh, uh, so I think we've just we're a lot of uh, really fun crosstalk uh, on the uh, uh, in the chat thing that you might want to look at later. Um, but uh, OK, um, yeah, he was uh, there was somebody saying that they still needed needed more on the stamp and go. But I don't know whether whether you're ready to do that. Well, here's uh, here's a, here's a oh, song that was a stamp and go. All right, yep. this was other, a stamp and go. Go on, yep. One other thing is, where did you grow up specifically? <laughs> uh, I'm, still, I'm still working on that. <laughs> I'm still working on growing up. Yeah, Lynn, Lynn will Lynn will, will verify that. <laughs> now, uh, stamp stamp and go and short haul shanties were uh, were interchangeable. And this was somewhere where you just needed a small amount of big effort and not necessarily uh, not necessarily rhythmical effort, but just like a track lining song to 
have you prepare for that effort and then at this at the audible signal at the vocal signal to to heave or haul or actually to walk away and uh, when i was recording uh when i was re recording my first album with the wonderful polish group kuftry um, we were trying to sort out what songs we were going to do and they said let's do round the corner sally and i said why and i said no one else in poland sings this song we should do round the corner sally and i said but that's a that's a short haul shanty again interchangeable with the stamp and go i said so it's only going to fill about 10 15 maybe 20 seconds of a cd and luke thought about that for a minute and he said yes but tom you are songwriter no <laughs> <laughs> so, what, so what, what was this? I'm going to take the other. I'm going to take the other ukulele. I have two interchangeable ukuleles. Who's who's a lucky boy to have two Gibson ukuleles? <laughs> well, even. Leaving sunny Mexico, round the corners. That's not right, is it? We're leaving sunny Mexico, round the corner, Sally. Round Cape Horn, we're bound to go. Round the corner, Sally. Round the corner is a long, long way to Violet Farm and Kyle Bay. Round the corner, we must roam. We don't care if we never go home. So, what what they would be doing they'd probably at this point be up on a yard and bunting a sail to which was to knock the air out of the sail so that they could grab it now this is stiff thick maybe cold frozen canvas they've got to knock the air out find a place to grab it and then haul it up and tuck it down between their bellies and the yard and lean on it and go down for more. So they'd be going, the shanty man would be singing, We're leaving sunny Mexico, round the corner, Sally! And they'd do, do that, and then they'd lean on it, and he'd, and he'd sing again. But I had to make it into a longer song, so I had to put, put a chorus in it. This is entirely legitimate. Stan Hugo once told me that many of the shanties were many of the shanties were interchangeable and they could be made into capstan shanties by the addition of what he called a grand chorus so i i decided fine that's what we'll do with this song we'll make it two minutes 45 perfect for am radio and uh we'll we're in sunny mexico round the corner sale Round Cape Horn we're bound to go Round the corner Sally Round the corner is a long, long way To Valley Po and Callio Bay Round the corner we must roam We don't care if we never go home Say, was you ever off Cape Horn? Round the corner Sally Where your ass is never warm Round the corner Sally Round the corner is a long, long way to Valley Po and Callio Bay. Round the corner we must roam. We don't care if we never go home. There's ice and snow and sleet and rain. Round the corner, Sally. You meet them coming back again. Round the corner, Sally. Round the corner is a long, long way to Valley Po and Callio Bay. Round the corner we must roam. We don't care if we never go home. And when we reach Pacific Seas, round the corner, Sally, we'll drop into Madame Gishy's. Round the corner, Sally, round the corner is a long, long way to Valley Point, Callao Bay. Round the corner we must roam. We don't care if we never go home. 
Spanish girls will make you smile Round the corner, Sally You want to stay for a long, long while Round the corner, Sally Round the corner is a long, long way To Valley Bow and Galileo Bay Round the corner we must roam We don't care if we never go home It's up a lot, the shots must go Round the corner, Sally it's up aloft, this yard must go Round the corner, Sally Mr. Mate has told us so Round the corner, Sally Round the corner is a long, long way To Valipo and Collier Bay Round the corner we must roam We don't care if we never go home Yes, round the corner is a long, long way To Valipo and Collier Bay Round the corner we must roam We don't care if we never go home 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 <laughs> So that was a short haul shanty or stamp and go which I had to adapt so that it became a performance piece Now there's an interesting little piece in there Every single one of these traditional shanties has information in it and it comes at you so fast and so melodically and hopefully so natural that it can go whizzing right over your head. Now, there are several songs, several shanties where the girls are called Sally. And if it's from Sally, you're talking about the trade between the Bay of Mexico, down the Atlantic coast of South America, around Cape Horn, Cape Stiff, the corner, up the Pacific coast, and all the way to California. All those girls were called Sally by the sailors. If they were talking about Sheila's, they were on the Australia run. If they were talking about Judy's, their home port, was Liverpool. If it was Nancy, it was probably Southampton and Portsmouth. Hmm. Who knows why? They did, but they didn't share the information with us. But Sally was ubiquitous for all the girls around South America. But the sailors defined a difference between the Portuguese girls who lived on the Atlantic coast and what they called the Spanish girls who lived on the Pacific coast because they believed, quite honestly believed, that the Spanish girls were not only more beautiful than their Atlantic coast cousins, but they were also more kind, more tender hearted. And I'm sure that was true. <laughs> so, the girls on the Pacific coast, to get to them, they had to go around Cape Horn. They had to go around the corner. So all of the girls were Sally's, but the Spanish girls were round the corner Sally's. That's where it comes from. Of How are we doing, I Dan? Do. Oh, we're Where doing are we? I think there was a question about the keys on your melod melodeon, but I think it was answered. Um, okay, it was D and D. It's a DG melodeon, and it's a lovely little instrument, and deserves somebody um, more talented than I to play it properly. But you do what you can with what you've got. Okay, somebody was asking, oh yeah, where I grew up. Yeah, well, I denied growing up. Okay, I was born in Belfast, which means that the Dublin government uh, recognized that I am Irish by dint of having been born within the confines of the island of Ireland. So I am here perfectly legally. I have an Irish passport. I also have a Canadian passport and a British passport. You can... Take my advice, folks. You can never have too many passports. <laughs> Don't show them all to the, the all to the same customs officer. It tends to they they don't like that. Their their blood pressure starts to go up. But uh, 
So I was born in Belfast. And when I was nine, my mother, uh, who was a single parent before they invented the term, took uh, my sister, my older sister and myself, uh, and moves us to Gloucester in southwest of England. Uh, she was following yet another worthless man. And I lived there until just a few days after my 16th birthday, when uh, when I left my my uh, sister and my mother and uh, my the, the worthless man having gone to his great reward some years before. I won't say thank God, but thank God. And uh, and I went off to join the Royal Navy. So I was still growing up. Uh, I was just I was less than two weeks past my 16th birthday and I went off to be an apprentice. And I've been. I must have been growing up because I've never gotten any taller. <laughs> Anymore. What we got? Pacific girls were more desperate. Well, wow. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I thought it was just okay. because they'd worked so hard to get to them that they must have thought they were better. Well, the you know the um there there there's a there's a, a song called the gallant frigate Amphitrite, which uh, is is a is a traditional song, but whether it was an actual frigate or not, uh, I don't know. But um, the the close the closing verse uh, mourns the fact that the sailor will be in England in his retirement and his dotage, just dreaming of those Spanish girls we left around Cape Horn. And, uh, you know, so they, they must have had some reason for it. I've not actually made it to that coast. Well, California and the Baja, but uh, I, I didn't notice any dark curly haired girls making goo goo eyes at me. So what do I know? Anyway, here I am on on this boat and it was a fairly hurried decision to to come over here last July and our sort of like station wagon type car it's a Skoda Roomster was full to the gunnels when we got to the ferry um, they wanted to examine the, the what, what we got in the car and the customs agents looked through the window shook their heads and waved us on. There was not room for, they knew that if they opened the, any door in the back of the car, they weren't gonna, it was gonna take hours to get it all back again. So I didn't bring a lot of stuff with me, including um, my Stan Hugel and my uh, my Joanna Col Colcord, uh, you know, Songs of the Shanty Men and Shanty Boys, uh, Sailors, yes! <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris and Captain Wall. I've got all my reference works uh, left back in England in storage. Uh, so I'm making this up as I go along to, to a large degree on my memory, which at my age could be fairly faulty. And if there's anybody from, uh, from Salmo around there uh, who's watching this, they will know that I have a reputation in that area as being one of the world's great bullshitters. In other words, uh, anybody wants an answer to a question, I've got it. Whether the answer will be true or not, who knows? But uh, <laughs> if Susie Backen's out there, hi, Susie. <laughs> a true sailor. Anyway, so I don't have my shanties from the seven seas, but it does lead me nicely into Stan Hugill. Stan Hugill saved the shanties for us. If, if Stan Hugel hadn't been around, the history of singing sea shanties all over the world would be vastly different, possibly even non-existent, but vastly different than it is today. Now, for those of you who don't know, Stan Hugel was born during the First World War. And he came from a seafaring family but at the age of 16 and a bit, he, like someone else you know, Lynn, uh, <laughs> he went off to sea um, from Liverpool uh, on, a, on a powered ship, probably a steam, probably not a diesel ship, although diesel ships 
were becoming due to uh, the success of German submarines, diesels were becoming very, very popular. So he went off on his first voyage and a year later, Sam is never very clear about this, about how he came to be washed up on the beach in uh, not literally, but figuratively washed up on the beach in New Zealand in 1923. But he became, under the terms of the British Merchant Shipping Act, he became a distressed British seaman. And it was then the responsibility of the local British agent to find him a berth, a working berth on a British flagged ship that was going back to his home port. And that's exactly what was found for him. He, they found him a working berth on a ship that was heading back and had Liverpool on its, on its itinerary. It was a square rig sailing ship and it took him three years to get home. By that time, he was in his early twenties and was cognizant, knowledgeable, steeped in the, in the techniques, in the skills of making a sailing ship go. I think there's somebody on a phone I can see there who's checking up to see if this is right. He's probably phoning Martin Hugill. And <laughs> <laughs> I can see you, Brian. So he became a valuable resource not for not for ethnomusicologists and folk song collectors but for sailing ship captains and sailing ship owners here they had a young strong man who knew what he was doing on a sailing ship and he was very much in demand he never he never wanted for work of, of sailing right up till the Second World War. He was very experienced. He doubled the, the Cape Horn three times on the four-masted bark Garth Pool, but was not on board for its last voyage, or we might never have him because Garth Pool went down. And he, uh, after the war, in the very early 50s, he got recruited by a fellow called Kurt Hahn. Now, Kurt Hahn was the fellow who started an international organization known as Outward Bound. And Kurt Hahn collaborated with several people, and I've got them, got their names down here somewhere, but I'm, I'm, we're, we're off on a different, on a different course. There we go. Oh, here we go. Yes. Alan Villiers, world famous for having written an ocean war wanderer and being the captain of the Waver Tree, which I believe is still in South Street Seaport in New York, although they've uh, they've managed to uh, to get Peking back to Hamburg. Uh, Waver Tree is still there. And Uffa Fox, who taught the Duke of Edinburgh to sail as a young man. And uh, these were all people who were involved with Outward Bound and what became the Duke of Edinburgh's award scheme, which started out for young men, but very quickly became young people. And at Aberdovey in North Wales, there is still an Outward Bound school. But in the early 1950s, Stan Hugel became the bosun there and was teaching small boat handling, rowing, sailing, and just general nautical garbage to young men. And Uffa Fox and, uh, and Alan Villiers, Kurt Hahn, at points they would hear Stan singing to keep a cadence for rowing or hauling a boat up a slip and they started talking to him about it and said, where, where did you get these songs from? And Alan Villiers knew where the songs were from, but Alan Villiers being a captain had not worked down on the deck. 
heaving and hauling, but Stan had. And they said to Stan, well, you should write these down in a book because no one else has got this knowledge. And he never did until he broke his leg, at which point they sat him down with his leg in a cast in front of a desk with pen and paper and said, start writing. And the upshot of that was a treasure called Shanties from the Seven Seas, which was the first book of sea shanties to have musical notation written on the page. And as if that wasn't enough, it was illustrated, is illustrated, with Stan's pen and ink drawings, which are, are full of life and the drawings themselves are full of information about what happens when these songs are sung. Thank you very much. There's, there's Chris Glanister again. Yes. That's the coffee table book, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, so, so these songs come to us from Stan Hugill. And anybody who's interested in this, the book is still in publication by, by Mystic Seaport Press. And in, by the way, afterwards, please, if you need information, write to me, I, uh, email me, I will respond, I will give you all the information. Got it, Brian, <laughs> thank you. The, the information isn't mine. I've only, I've only got some access to it. And we're now, and of course, I dare say there are people at Maritime Folknet who've got even more information, probably more accurate information than I've got. But this is a song that I, I wrote, and it's not about Stan Hugill. It's not a shanty. It's just stuff with information in it. And although it's not about Stan, it's set very firmly, it's bookended by his lifespan. And it's really about all the old time shanty men who Stan Hugel came to epitomize. And it's, the name of the, name of the song is Recall. And that's because it's after the Blue Peter flag. In the international signaling flags, the letter P, Papa, is represented by a square blue flag with a square white piece in the middle. And for hundreds of years, that's been used as a signal that a ship is under sailing orders and the crew and the passengers, if they got them, had better get on board pretty quick. Hey, uh, Tom, Dan here. Um, I wanted to, uh, before you start the song, we're, we've reached what we will call halftime at this point, and uh, I'm going to bow out and hand over the uh, hosting and em emceeing uh, to my friend and fellow board member, Helen Gilbert. So okay. uh, I'll still be around, but there she is. And There's Helen. Hi, Helen. Okay. Well, I'm just going to sing this song, and then I'm going to going to uh, give people a chance to, um, as, as as though I was actually reading from the from the sheet here, which I'm not. I've, I don't know where I am on that, but uh, <laughs> I've taken my glasses off, so I've I've stopped being stopped being the pedant and become the performer again. And this this song is entitled Recall. The war to end wars ended, and I told my friends at school. Someday I'll sail around the world, they laughed and called me fool. But even as a youngster, I was stubborn as a mule. I set out to be a sailor man. So I signed aboard my first ship with a bright and cheerful song. 
They said I was a nightingale who eased the work along. I learned the old men's stories and the work chants loud and strong. That's how I became a shanty man. And I'd scream just like a banshee to be heard above the gales, to keep the watch in unison and help them reef the sails. The crew were tough as whipcord, the skipper hard as nails. Still they needed this young shanty man. But days of sail were ending and steamships coming fast. I watched them plough into the wind, no sail set up the mast. Black coal to drive them onward, and no more the cool, clear blast. A cold wind blowing for the shanty man. And sitting on the capstan, as my mates walked round, I'd fiddle to the rhythm of the pawl and ratchet sound, but hissing steam and clanking piston need no music now. Say goodbye to one old shanty man. Long decades passed without the work songs roaring to the sky. And sailor men upon the beach could only wonder why those graceful ships of yesteryear no more would greet their eye. Washed up like flotsam was the shanty man. But now once more the great square riggers sail the oceans wide. Those tall ships filled with green young sailors working side by side. The old songs ringing out again, the shanties never died. Hoist blue Peter for the shanty man. Blue Peter's hoisted for the shanty man. Helen. Helen, I'm going to let you take over for a moment whilst everybody else can disappear for, uh, for a few seconds. Uh, I sort of can't. Is Helen? Yes, yeah. Helen, yeah. No, it's all right. I can put my glasses on. I can't, I can't read a thing with that. Oh, oh, yeah, Helen's a good looking one. Right. There was only two of us. I don't know about that song. <laughs> Thank you for that song. Yeah. I forgot I'm, I'm how much I love that song. Well, thank you. I'm going to hand over to you for five minutes and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take an opportunity for a rest stop and uh, then I'll do some questions and try and get back on track with my, uh, with, with my hymn sheet here. All, All right. right. All right. Sounds Thanks. Like Thanks. Bye, bye for now, Helen. Sorry. I'm just going to take an opportunity to um to tell you guys about Maritime Folknet, who are presenting this this um, wonderful workshop. I, I don't know if you guys are enjoying it as much as I am, but it's been fabulous so far. So, <laughs> uh, Maritime Folknet are a nonprofit group based in the Seattle area, and um, you know our mission is to kind of preserve and support the heritage and culture of Pacific Northwest maritime heritage through music and to um, 
to create places and events in which folk musicians can actually be paid for performances, which is a very important thing because we need to sustain the, these traditions for years to come. So um, if you want to uh, learn more about, um, excuse me, I just need to change my screenshot here. There we go. <laughs> if you want to learn a little more about Maritime Folknet, you can visit our website, which is um, handily on the screen currently, uh, maritimefolknet.org. We always welcome donations to help us put together programs like this workshop. Um, and um, you can support Tom as well by visiting his website, which is tomlewis.net. Um, and Maritime Folk Net ends in .org, so they, they're they a little different. So um, we have some CDs that we've put together over the years that are available for purchase. You can also become a member of Maritime Folk Net, and if you do so, you receive a free CD. So uh, that's a win-win situation. Um, just because we do have international folks here, I will let you know that uh, we've had a few members joining from England. I will be sending a package of free CDs over to England to get to those folks in the next sort of week. So if you are in the UK and want to become a member and receive a free CD, try and do it soon so that I can include that. Um, I also want to mention that we are supported in part by um, For Culture, which is a local uh, King County, Seattle area um, group that um, issues grants for nonprofits and things. And they do support um, our workshops and a couple of our other local events. So I just wanted to give a shout out to them. That's uh, For Culture. Um, other than that, let's see, what else could I tell you about? What are we looking at now? Are we looking at the donate page? No, that's the membership page we're looking at right now. Someone else is, is um, controlling the screen. So, <laughs> so if you do want to donate to Maritime Folk Net, um, it can easily be done through PayPal on our website um, or checks can be mailed to our physical address as well. So, um, but yes, and I'm sure Tom has plenty of CDs for, av available for purchase on his website as well. So lots of ways to support the programs and the performers that, um, that we present. So let's see, where are we? I'm not sure how long I'm supposed to talk for here. Does anyone else have questions? If you have questions for Tom, make sure you put them in the chat so we can get those to him. And uh, I'm yeah. back also. I've I'm, I'm, I'm had... back as well, Helen. Oh, okay. okay. I, had, I had to do a comfort stop myself. <laughs> All well, right. I will let Tom get back to the program. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and get back to the evolution of, of sea shanties because that is that is the build the build purpose of this of this zoom thing so uh so let's uh, let's do that but one of the reasons that sea shanties are are being are having i wouldn't call it a resurgence but but i would say there is a a, a little bit of a fashion swell and that's because of uh, of, of the great success of our of our, Scot our scottish friends uh TikTok, well youtube and then TikTok version of the weller man and of course everybody's referring to it as the sea shanty and uh, i wonder how many heads uh, out there if i should get the, get everybody on, on screen uh, i wonder how many heads are uh, are shaking or even even eyes rolling of course not a sea shanty um it would uh, it would not it was written as far as we know by an actual uh, shore, shoreside flenser, uh, which would be taking, stripping the blubber from whales that were brought into a New Zealand whaling station, where uh, where we've uh, we, we we were down uh, at some of those whaling stations about ten years ago, yeah. and uh, and the Wellerman, the Wellerman was a ship called Wellerman owned by two brothers of the same name 
who were actually ship chandlers. And uh, so, the, so the song says, uh, you know, soon may the well, weller man come to, to bring us tea and sugar and rum. And so it's, it's, all the, it's all the sort of stuff that would be coming down from Auckland to the, to the South Island and the whaling stations down there. And it's talking when the tonguing is done. Tonguing is, uh, is an older term for flensing, which was actually to take huge sharp hooks. And after the whale was hauled up onto the, onto the land, they would, be, they would use these, these hooks to, to flense the whale, to, to strip the blubber from it. Um, so it, but I, as with songs I write, I can't see a way that it would have been used as a sea shanty, as a work song, as a tool of the trade to coordinate. But it's close enough because that's what shanties have come to mean to us. We're, we're, we've taken one specific type of song and then we folded in all other sorts of songs. We've got agricultural songs industrial revolution songs we've got marching songs we've got all sorts of things and it's anything that can be sung as a community becomes for us a shanty and especially for the wider less knowledgeable public they say yeah that's a shanty because it mentions a ship well that's a that's a philosophy to which i cleave very strongly if it mentions a ship it's a sea shanty. For God's sake, don't let's get too precious about this. But um, so there, there were always rhythmical songs for work. One of the earliest we have is, is uh, actual harvesters. Harvesters in a long line would actually go around. I'm going to try and sort of dem demonstrate this with They'd be in a long line with a scythe, and they would be uh, they would be swinging their scythes, and and they would. But what sort of rhythm do you use for that? And what songs would harvesters know? Well, we're told in some of the old writings that they sang hymns as they were as they were going across the fields, possibly even. We plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land, but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. Actually, there's a census in Britain uh, this week, and I've had to uh, I've had to send my set get my census back, and there's a bit about religion, and I've got to tick none. So whether it's fed and watered by God's almighty hand or by Gaia, or just by, by sheer good or bad luck. I don't know. But I digress again, heavens. Uh, so, what? So, uh, so there was a, um, this is, uh, shanties do develop, but people, some people write songs about, about sailors, which is which is close enough. There was a time when I was hiding out from the Navy. You, you don't need to know why, but, uh, but I was hiding out from the Navy and I was trying to make myself unfindable. And at the time I was based shoresides at HMS Dolphin, the headquarters of the Royal Navy Submarine Service in Gosport, just across the harbor from Portsmouth. And I decided the only place they would not look for me was the local public library. So for about two or three days, I hung out in the public library and uh, I was, I decided I might as well use my time and research sea shanties and other associated things. And I found pretty much nothing at all, but I did come across one book. And it had a song in it by somebody called Henri Trattori. Henri Trattori. And I talked to the librarian about it, and this had been a, uh, a Gosport native who fancied himself 
as muscling in on Gilbert and Sullivan. So he decided he would write a song similar to the songs heard in HMS Pinafore and the Pirates of Penzance and things like that. But he knew more about the Navy. He was obviously something to do with the Royal Navy, not unusual in Gosport, because he got all the little sociological details correct. And I learned the song. And even though I couldn't read music, I got somebody to hum the tune for me as best they could. And then I copied them as best I could. And it became my version of Henry Trotter was his real name. He was not Henry Trattore. He was Henry Trotter. And this is my version of his song, The Bosun, The Gunner and Me. And The Bosun and The Gunner would be uh, non-commissioned officers. Actually, the gunner would be a warrant officer. The bosun would be a petty officer or chief petty officer. And me is obviously, as the song says, only a plain AB, naval seaman. The bosun, the gunner and me, lads, was each of us mighty sweet. On a Portsmouth last named Polly, as was known as the pride of the fleet. But when we got our orders to sail for the Golden West, why little Paul, she scarce could tell which one of us she loved best, which one of us she loved best. Oh, sweet Paul, on Portsmouth Quay, she gave us kisses three. A kiss on the cheek for the bosun and gunner, but one on the lips for me. As was only a plain A.B., me lads, only a plain A.B. A kiss on the cheek for the bosun and gunner, but one on the lips for me. We'd yellow jack on board, lads, way out in Barbados. And the bosun and gunner, sad to say, they both turned up their toes. So we found them a neat little berth, lads, at the foot of a tamarind tree. And we left them sleeping high and dry on the shores of the Western Sea. On the shores of the Western Sea. Then I thought of Portsmouth Quay, and Paul, who loved all three. And I thought as she'd lost both them, bosun and gunner, she'd better make sure of me. As was only a plain A.B., me lads, only a plain A.B. I thought as she'd lost both the bosun and gunner, she'd better tack on to me. We finished off the cruise, lads, and when ashore I got, well, Paul and me, with many's the kiss, agreed to splice the knot. I took her for better or worse, lads, but a nod's as good as a wink, and if there's things a tar can't say, there's lots as he can think, there's lots as he can think. And I think of Portsmouth Quay, and those happy days and free, when little Pearl, when little Paul first shook her curls at the bosun, the gunner, and me. And I think of the tamarind tree on the shores of the western sea. And oh, don't I wish, as the bosun or gunner had got her instead of me. <laughs> so that may not have been the evolution of a sea shanty, but it was the evolution or devolution of a songwriter, Henry Trotter. And I'm going to get on to Cyril Tawney in a minute because Cyril Tawney didn't write sea shanties either, but he wrote the most wondrous songs of the sea. Cyril was about 10 years older than me and about uh, about eight years before me in the Royal Navy. But we were both artificers. 
which is uh, which is a tradesman in the Royal Navy. We were both in diesel submarines and we were both in love with folk music. We didn't actually get to meet for more than a decade after I first knew and started to learn Cyril Tawney songs. But we uh, we struck up eventually a very, a very treasured friendship. And on the on the occasions when we talked about songwriting, we both were in agreement that most of the stuff written about the sea and ships and sailors by people who hadn't actually done it were over romanticized and really needed some reality in uh, in the world of nautical songwriting. But Cyril was influenced by myriad different things. And he loved to listen to the blues and to American work songs. He, uh, he, he, was, he even found them in some strange places. Um, I was trying to find a way of playing this and, uh, and have, having you listen, but if any of you go to YouTube and look at the movie On the Town, with Frank Sinatra and Gene Kelly. Uh, it's, a, it's a musical, uh, it's from a Broadway musical of the, of the same name. And it's about sailors on the loose in New York. But Cyril was most entranced by the opening where it's, the camera is just panning through the Navy Yard in New York, where I've actually played. And uh, and it has a crane driver up in a crane, and he's singing this mournful early morning song. And it's it's definitely American African American blues that's being sung. And Cyril referred to it as a holler, which of course was. Uh, was hollers were uh, were field hoeing songs, so I'm sure he was right. But he was, but he then went on to say that it'd been the inspiration for two songs of his. One was Sally Free and Easy, which is very nautical about a sailor, and one which is called On a Monday Morning, which is so universal it. Uh, it, it couldn't be more common. So if you if you imagine that that black African experience being transmitted through uh, through a fellow from the from the West Country of uh, of England and a, and a sailor, he was, he was there. The Sally Free and Easy was both of them were laments. Sally free and easy That should be her name Sally free and easy That should be her name She took a sailor's loving for a nursery game. Oh, the heart that she gave me was not made of stone. No, the heart that she gave me was not made of stone but it was sweet and hollow like a honeycomb think i'll wait till sunset see the ensign down Yes, 
I'll wait till sunset. Say the ensign down, then I'll take the tide race to my burying ground. Sally, free and easy. That should be her name. Sally, free and easy. That should be her name when my body's landed. Hope she dies of shame. Sounds like the blues to me, I've got to say. On a Monday morning, had a similar sort of ethos, um, but it's uh, it's one we can all all relate to, and none of us are going to commit suicide. I've just realised now I've got I've got three suicide songs in my repertoire. <laughs> so it's a uh, can't see. So uh, so this is uh, Cyril Tawney's. Cyril Tony, of course, wrote a song which I, I hope most of you are familiar with. This is Grey Funnel Line. I'm not going to do that tonight, but uh, it's it's easily available. And of course, uh, you can hear all of my songs on on band, all of my recorded songs on Bandcamp for free. So off you go. You want to download them, you got to pay, but you can go and hear them for free. So this is Cyril Tony's on the on a Monday morning. Too soon to be out of my bed Too soon to be back at the bus queue caper And fumbling for change for me morning paper On a Monday morning My lover, she lies asleep my lover is warm and her heart is mellow I'd give up the world just to share her pillow On a Monday morning Where is the weekend now? Where is the whiskey and the beer I've tasted? Gone the same way as the pay I've wasted On a Monday morning If only the birds would booze If only the sun was a party giver If I could just give someone else my liver On a Monday morning too soon to be out of my bed Too soon to be back at this bus queue caper And fumbling for change for me Bailey paper On a Monday morning On a Monday morning On a Monday morning And I'm, I'm sure there's going to be lots of you out there saying, what's this got to do with the evolution of the sea shanty? But um, for, for Cyril, this was all the evolution of a sea shanty. It, because it's, it's the working man's song and thoughts and emotions all, all put together. And really, What's a sea shanty? When do sea shanties become pop songs and pop songs become sea shanties? The epitome of that argument starts with Stephen Foster. The, uh, the limeys out there in the audience may not recognize Stephen Foster uh, too much, but uh, Stephen Foster wrote so many of the great songs of American heritage. And he wrote 
The Captain ladies sing this song, do da do da. Captain race track five miles long, oh do da day. I'm going to sing it the way I was taught to sing this by our music master in uh, in Sir Thomas Ritchie's Blue Coat Hospital School for Boys back in 1957 uh, when I was a when I was a mere 14 years old, 15, 14, and, uh, and he, uh, he insisted that we use the authentic lyrics as it was written and the, and to use the black American voice. So he sang, taught us to sing, the Captain ladies sing this song, do da, do da. The Captain race track five mile long, oh, do da day. Go and run all night, go and run all day. I bet my money on the bobtail nag, somebody bet on the bay. Which nowadays would be, at the very most generous, would be just taken as appropriation. But we don't know if that song was stolen from Stephen Foster by sailors who were heading around Cape Horn from New York and Boston for San Francisco, or whether Stephen Foster heard sailors coming back from San Francisco and thought, there's a good idea for a song. And I'm going to try to get uh... from Limehouse Dock to Frisco Bay to me. Huda! Huda! London to Frisco's a bloody long way. Oh, huda day. Blow, boys, blow for California. There's plenty of gold, so I've been told, on the banks of the Sacramento. Around Cape Stiff, we're bound to go to me. Huda! Huda! Around Cape Stiff in the sleet and snow. Huda! Huda! Day! Blow, boys, blow for California! Oh. There's plenty of gold, so I've been told, on the banks of the Sacramento. Now, I heard Stan Hugel singing this one time at, a, at an unexpurgated uh, sea shanty sing at Mystic Seaport. And, of course, he was explaining that to me, Huda! Huda! And that was your, your signal for hauling on a line. But also he did, he said, the, the verse didn't really go the way, the way we were singing it. It went, uh, or the chorus didn't go, It's blow, boys, blow for California. Oh, there's plenty of grass to wipe your ass on the banks of the Sacramento. So Stan Hugo could get away with that. I don't know if I can. So it's off we go with a shout and a hoot. Hooda, hooda, the old man, he's a tough galoot. Hooda, hooda, day. Blow, boys, blow for California. Oh. There's plenty of gold, so I've been told, on the banks of the Sacramento. Yes, blow, boys, blow for California. Oh. There's plenty of gold, so I've been told, on the banks of the Sacramento. What enough up behind? I don't know what job we were doing to that. We weren't doing any job at that sort of speed. It was probably a halyard shanty, but sung much more slowly and probably less melodiously. Well, here's here's a here's a sea shanty which was written as a shanty for loading beans on board of freighters. Uh, it's by my friend Jerry Casalt. Who, uh, who runs, and I hope still runs, the, uh, the, the Bay City Shanty Festival. But uh, he also works for, uh, for a company that, uh, that load beans onto mostly Japanese freighters. So this actually sounds like a shanty. As a, so you got to get a... 
Load em and stack em, you can't do it later. Load em and stack em on a Japanese freighter. Load em and stack em, the holds are getting higher. Load em and stack em till the sun goes down. Well, you work all day. Load them beans to make your pay. Load them beans, another pallet's coming. Load them beans down in the hold, so you gotta work on. Load em and stack em, you can't do it later. Load em and stack em on a Japanese freighter. Load em and stack em, the holes are getting higher. Load em and stack em till the sun goes down. Your hands are sore. Load em and stack em, you back even more. Load em and stack em, another palace coming. Load em and stack em, down in the hole, so you gotta work on. Load em and stack em, you can't do it later. Load em and stack em on a Japanese freighter. Load em and stack em till the holes are getting higher. Load em and stack em till the sun goes down. Load em and stack em till the sun goes down. Load em and stack em till the sun goes down. Unlike any good shanty man, which Jerry is, he can make that song go for a long, long time. As long as the, as long as the audience will keep singing, load them beans, load them beans. <laughs> You can really, you can really get a, get an audience worked out over that. So there's there's an evolution of a sea shanty, but sea shanties have even gotten into the realm of environmentalism. And this song, it, this isn't a new song. This song is more than thirty years old, and was written by Vic Vic Bell of. Uh, of Calgary and uh, Vic runs uh, two folk clubs in Calgary he runs this sea shanty festival and this is uh, so this is a song that he wrote from a summer spent on the coast of British Columbia uh, he first of all he was working as a park ranger and then he found there was more money to be made on fishing boats but the fishing boats who were catching salmon were only allowed to catch until their quota had been reached. And then the fishing boats had to go back in. So the owners and the captains of the crews of the fishing boats, instead of doing that, would go hunting logs. There were huge log booms that were hauled down that coast at about two or three miles an hour. Originally, these were actually rowed by hundreds of men. These, these log booms would be 10 or 15 feet high, 50 to 100 feet wide, and as much as a third of a mile long. And they would be all chained together in a huge raft. When they were, when they were being rowed by men, they even built log cabins on top of these to live on because it would take them weeks to get down the coast. So. This is what uh, this is what Vic Bell wrote. Got a halibut boat. The opening is over. The fish just weren't biting. Our catch is way down. We're salvagers now. There's logs waiting. We just go snatch them off shore and sell them in town. We snap the line tight. Haul it away. Snap the line tight. She's rocking, she's free. Snap the line tight, haul it away, slide them off into the sea. She's a six foot thick hemlock, half sunken in sand. Gotta dig out a hole to pass the line through. Wrap her around when she's tied and ready. Just stand clear away while you signal the crew to snap the line tight. Haul it away, snap the line tight, she's rocking, she's free, snap the line tight, haul it away, slide them off into the sea. And it's 36 hours we've been without sleep, gotta boom them by dawn if we're making this tide, 
with his five hour hull, with a nor'wester blowing and a starboard side swell for a bloody rough ride. We snap the line tight, haul it away, snap the line tight, she's rocking, she's free, snap the line tight, haul it away, slide em off into the sea. How many thousands of acres of forest lie scattered and heaped by the wind and the tide? The companies cut them, boomed them and lost them, then left them forever to rot where they lie. But we snap the line tight, haul it away, snap the line tight, she's rocking, she's free, snap the line tight. Haul it away, slide em off into the sea. We snap the line tight. Rick Bell, snap the line tight. Well, as usually, as usual, I've talked too much and <laughs> not sung enough. But uh, I'm going to do the evolution of the sea shanty bring it to its conclusion in a moment, but uh, no, I don't think we've got time. Un unfortunately, I don't think we've got time for uh, to tell you the whys and the wherefores of Drunken Sailor. We'll have to, I'll leave that and we'll, when we're doing, there's a, there's a great, uh, great little Zoom meeting called Shanties at Home. I'm going to go on that, uh, so gra grab that and I will, uh, and I will do the whole the whole performance of uh, of Drunken Sailor. But this is where my own particular evolution of shanties is gone. Down a bit, sure. Sir. Thanks. It's uh, and this is sort of in response to the Weller Man, which uh, which may or may not have been a work song, may or may not have been a shanty. This definitely isn't a work song, and it's. Uh, it's my latest song, and it is, to be exact, and to give you the title, it's a shanty for singing. And this is a world premiere, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to take my glasses off. Can't even read it on my screen over here. <laughs> yes. On a ship under sail in a breeze or a gale There was hard work for sailors to do So they shouted and hauled as they heaved and they hauled Sometimes only six hands in the crew For the sailors had songs just to help work along At capstan and winches and line Whether hoisting the main yard or hauling a halyard The shanty man kept them in time but this is a shanty for singing and your voice get the rafters a ringing you all know what to do harmonize with your crew this is a shanty for singing there are hymns in the kirk there are shanties for work songs for each rhyme and each reason there are love songs and trancing and pop songs for dancing and carols when they are in season. With the sun on your neck or green water on deck, there was always a job to be done. But here in the pub with fine ale and good grub, the singing is part of the fun. For this is a shanty for singing, and your voice get the rafters a ringing. You all know what to do, harmonize with your crew. This is a shanty for singing. There's, whoa, where have we got? I no, see, I should have got it there. <laughs> There's no, no, gosh. Lynn, can you read it for me there? Ah, so new, it's so new. That's a... Sing a shanty for fun. That's it, thank you. Sing this. This will this will answer a question that we had earlier. Sing a shanty for pumps when you're down in the dumps. Short drag when you've not got much time. 
A stamp and go serves if you're just a bit nervous. A four bitter doesn't need to rhyme. Or scan. When the room starts to sway or you're drifting away, you surely have too much drink taken. If the girl of your fancy says her name is Nancy, she'll probably leave you forsaken. But this is a shanty for singing. Add your voice, get the rafters a ringing. You all know what to do, harmonize with your crew. This is a shanty for singing. There's no man and no maid who should ever be afraid of singing at toil or at leisure. For at work or at play, every sailor will say, Singing is always a pleasure at the bar of a capstan or bar of a pub. Raise your voice, let the melody fly. Every girl, every boy, don't be shy, don't be coy, whenever the chorus comes by. For this is a shanty for singing, add your voice, get the rafters a ringing. You all know what to do, harmonize with your crew. This is a shanty for singing, yes, this is a shanty for singing. Add your voice, get the rafters a ringing. You all know what to do, harmonize with your crew. This is a shanty for singing. And there you have it. That's my evolution of the sea shanty. All Wonderful. Right. That was a fabulous song, Tom. Thank you for sharing that with us as a world premiere. <laughs> Yeah, you see, and I, and I and I had to uh, I had to break in the middle just so it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be made into a movie. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, we have a couple of um, little questions for you here. Um, someone was asking where and when the Shanties at Home um, event was, but I believe someone put a, a link to that in the chat. So uh, if people yes, want Bri to know, yes, Bri Bri it. Brian Brian is here from Shanties at Home, so he'll. Uh, and it's a it's a it's a good it's a good it's a good session it really is a good session and Fabulous. i'm sure they'd love to have people from all over the world great what day of the week is it on do you know is it is it weekly monthly brian unmute yourself and tell them about it yeah it's uh it's a friday it's a friday evening uh gmt um on the third friday of each month so it's a monthly session we used to be in a pub, cross, a pub called Cross Keys, but um, over the past year we've been doing it, you know, from at home. And uh, but you know, the Zoom it has the advantages, as Tom's, you know, intimating there of welcoming. Well, you, might, you might find Brian that you got so many singers, you're going to have to have to move it to weekly. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any, anything more there? More questions. Great, thank you for that, Brian. Um, and someone was asking Tom if there was a tip jar for you. Do you have a PayPal link or anything people can? No, if, to? If, if anybody want, if anybody wants to donate to my personal coffers, they can uh, they can go on Bandcamp and actually buy some of the music. They can write to me or go on my website and buy uh, buy physical CDs. And if they want to do a tip jar, I think the the tip jar needs to go to the maritime folk net please not to me all right you 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 can you can donate to that but thank you very much for the thought it's greatly appreciated but the royal navy is still paying my pension they hate me <laughs> well, all we right, hope, thank we you hope for that, that they pay it we hope that they pay it for a long long time and uh, yes we uh, at maritime folk net would love to have your donations uh that will help us do more things like this um and we will keep you posted. So please do check our website, maritimefolknet.org. Uh, there is a donate button. Um, oh, yeah, and there it is on screen. Um, and uh, we would love to have more members. Um, if you are uh, interested in volunteering and helping us put on our programs, we uh, would dearly love to have you aboard our little crew. Um, so think about that also. And if I might just uh, interject myself here, 
I'd like to thank Lynn Applegate, Helen Gilbert, Dan Roberts, Chris Glanister, yourself, of course, Dan, um, and of course, remembering Alice Winship, who really got this ball rolling. You know, we, uh, we, we, all, we all remember her very fondly, and not at least David Kessler for guiding me personally through the vagaries of my, uh, my unreliable technology. Thank you all very much. And thanks to the Maritime Folk Net for having me here this evening. And thanks everybody for coming along. Email, phone, whatever. I'll be around. Bye. All right. Um, let's see. Am I still <laughs> got to find myself there on screen? Okay. You're still there. Uh, please do stay, uh, stay around. Okay. We have uh, David uh, Kessler there on screen. I uh, would also like, uh, we gave a shout out to, uh, to uh, Lynn Applegate and to Ginny. There's Ginny Agnew. Um, She's our membership coordinator, so send, send your money to her. And uh, let's see, I don't see Lynn here yet, but we want to thank her for being, she was uh, the kind person who let most of you into the, uh, into the Zoom. Uh, there Zoom. she is. Okay. Come oh, on. I, see, I see the beginnings. Take, <laughs> see the take, beginnings take your of mask off, Lynn. <laughs> we want to see you as well. But, uh and if, if actually, you know, I did mention the idea that we could use volunteers. We can also use uh, another board member or two. Uh, the board meetings are pretty, pretty um, entertaining and limited to two hours. Um, if we haven't figured it out by two hours, it's probably not that important. Anyway, um, let's see. Um, and please do uh, um, do uh, go to Bandcamp or to. Uh, Tom's website for uh, for his product and his merch, as we like to say. And I think uh, Tom is uh, girding himself up to take us out with a song. Why not? Let, let's let's all sing ourselves out. Let's. Uh, uh, the, you you as a sailor, if you'd signed on, you'd get a month's pay in advance, and you were going to spend that very wisely, weren't you? And the next morning. You would be uh, you'd be hung over, not really wanting to tramp around the capstan, but you got to do it anyway. What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? What shall we do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning, hooray! Up she rises, hooray! Up she rises, hooray! Up she rises, early in the morning. Shave his belly with a rusty razor, shave his belly with a rusty razor, shave his belly with a rusty razor, early in the morning. Hooray, up she rises, hooray, up she rises, hooray, up she rises, early in the morning. That's what we do with a drunken sailor, that's what we do with a drunken sailor, that's what we do with a drunken sailor, early in the morning. Hooray, up she rises, hooray, up she rises, hooray, up she rises, early in the morn again. Hooray, up she rises, hooray, up she rises, hooray, up she rises, early in the morn Night. Well, that was fantastic. Uh, thank you everyone who's been on this Zoom. We're gonna stick around to, I don't know, chat just a little bit, not gonna close it down just yet. Uh, but for all of you who are out there listening to us on YouTube, uh, that was the great Tom Lewis, given his evolution of the sea shanty talk and maybe a little bit more as he went out, as he drifted from the script to and fro. Um, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're gonna shut down this, uh, this YouTube broadcast in just a minute. Um, but thank you again, Tom Lewis. Thank you again to all of you who showed up to watch. Uh, please subscribe to uh, the Maritime Folknet YouTube channel. 
because we're somewhere in the 50s, and if we can get up to 100, then we get to customize the channel. Ha-ha. Yes. So just and click that David, button, David, and you can help us right there. Also David, like us. I'm, I'm still here, so if, uh, if, you want to, if you want to do any, any questions afterwards, I'll hang around for that. Awesome. Thank you. Tom Lewis has not left the building. Uh, also, also, please. I was never in the Facebook. building. <laughs> or the boat. For, for, all right. for, all of, for all of you on YouTube, before we shut that down, um, you can donate to Tom through his website, tomlewis.net, or through his Bandcamp page. Donate, buy CDs, and all of that. Uh, you can also like Maritime Folknet on Facebook and on YouTube. You can donate to us, maritimefolknet.org slash donate or spend the same amount of money and become a member, which gets you a free CD. Uh, or don't do any of that, just buy a CD. Hey, it's all on the website, maritimefolknet.org. Um, Dan, Helen, any final words before I close all this out for the YouTube folks? Uh, I'd like to, uh, to, to uh, pipe us off. Whoops, it's not working. Okay. I couldn't find my bosun's pipe, so somebody gave me one of these. That was bloody awful, Dan. <laughs> I know. My bosun's whistle works a lot better than an Oscar Mayer wiener whistle, but that's what I could find. And okay, Dan. Okay. Dan, on, that, on, on that. What, you, what you actually can't, couldn't find is a bosun's call. Uh -huh. A bosun's call. Uh, and what you make with it is a pipe. And I recognize what you're trying to do. That was lower away, which is to welcome an admiral on board. Well, I don't think you made it that quite that far in the Royal Navy, but. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I stopped a little bit short there, didn't I? Thank, thank you again, Tom, for, for rescuing what Jan, Dan just did and making it authentic and, uh, and, and, and germane. Um, and now, for real, this time, going to end the YouTube broadcast to all of you out there watching online. Thank you so much for all of you here in the Zoom. Stick around a minute.